So we are here at Jeff Tremaine's house checking out this massive aquarium. Can't wait to get this private tour. Let's go. The Cichlid Bros continued on their journey to find some of the best aquarium content in Los Angeles. In previous videos, we toured an entryway koi pond in the Hollywood Hills, followed by an incredible 500 gallon in-wall corner cichlid tank. Today we are very excited to tour the biggest aquarium yet, a massive 2,000 gallon home aquarium of Jeff Tremaine. Jeff is a well-known director, writer, and producer of countless films, including the Jackass movies and shows. Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville. Welcome to Jackass. along with many others. Let's just say his IMDb is extensive. Jeff has been into aquariums for a long time now. He actually appeared on the show Tanked many years ago, which he then followed up with a new tank by Infinity Aquariums a few years ago. Today we're gonna to hear from Nick and Joe from Infinity Aquariums, along with Jeff himself. Nick will give background on the tank itself, followed by Jeff, and then ending with maybe my favorite part, the filtration room with Joe. You won't wanna miss that. So we're very excited to tour this one. Let's kick it over to Nick. So this aquarium is 10 foot long, four foot front to back and five foot tall with an internal volume of about 1500 gallons. And then all together with the filtration, we probably have another 400 gallons. So we're just under 2000 gallons. Plus we have another 150 gallons separated as a quarantine system. And then we have almost 500 gallons of standby RODI water. So it's a very elaborate system. As you can see, it's one of a kind. You don't see many tanks this vibrant and this pristine at the same time. Public facilities will show you large volume aquariums with a tremendous variety of fish, but to get that spectacular cleanliness and that pristine look on the decorations is very rare. I take a tremendous amount of pride in this tank. This is like my baby. And I do everything I can to make sure all of the animals are in perfect condition as well as the rest of the system. So a little bit about this tank. What's unusual about the selection of fish is that you don't see these varieties put together that often. You'll notice that we have several large tangs, several large pomacanthus angels, several pygmy angels. In conjunction with small fish like damsels, we have a school of antheus. We have little spotted puffers in here. There are fish that naturally would not coexist in a captive environment, but because of our regiment, especially our feeding regiments, they're able to cohabitate without any aggression. And all of these fish are very, very healthy. You'll notice that some of these fish, particularly the ones that, that are show size, are actually from Jeff's previous tank, which is going back 10, 12 years. Wow. So, um, you know, like the puffer, the Sohal tang, Maxine is the clown trigger, uh, the unicorn tang, these are all fish from his previous aquarium, uh, which takes us back over a decade. So. We're all very attached to these fish. This, this aquarium is like a family favorite. Uh, Golden Puffer is one of the originals too. But this tank is acrylic. This was a dining room wall. This was a wall and behind it was a bedroom. And in order to make this work, we had to blow out the wall and not only convert the bedroom to an equipment room, we obviously had to reinforce the floor. So this, this was an addition at some point in the construction of this house. And um, it was just uh, two by sixes under the floor. This tank is about 25,000 pounds. So we had to do everything over. We poured four foot concrete footings on top of steel, on top of concrete, on top of a steel frame, on top of polycarbonate, and then the tank for obvious reasons. I mean, this thing can't shift even an inch. Yeah. But uh, it's turning two years old next month. You know, just like the cichlid tank, there are times when I sit right here for a half an hour before I even start thinking about maintenance just to observe the fish. I feed the fish every time I'm here. We'll do it today. Uh, and that's for me to get a chance to see if there is any aggression, if there's any fish that look like they're a little malnourished, we'll bump up certain foods to make sure they get the appropriate diet. Um, yeah, I feel like maintaining an aquarium of this intricacy, observing it has to play a large part in your success. Without a doubt, you, you have to really know what, what the condition is of every individual fish. Especially in a tank like this where a lot of these are not typically cohabitating together, you have to look for certain signs of aggression. That's why we have a separate system for isolation or for removal, especially for quarantine. You can't bring in a fish uh, with this type of population and risk any parasites being introduced. So, yeah, but we take pride in that. I mean, and that's the beauty of enjoying our job is just to get to sit and watch um, the success of, of our hard work. And uh, this tank never gets old, never gets old. And Nick, you mentioned how a lot of times you'll install a tank and then build the house. 
Did you have to maneuver this through a house? It's a huge tank. Two things, this house has been here for decades, so we had to bring this in after the house. And second, there's a great video on our YouTube channel, Infinity Aquariums, that shows the whole behind the scenes of the construction and installation of this project. So if you really wanna see how we put this thing together, go check it out. We'll put the link in the description. <laughs> Um, but yes, we, this, this came in after the fact. We had to make some big changes in order for it to be safe and secure. Uh, but, you know, Jeff gave us carte blanche and, and this is the result. Yeah, it's incredible. This is a uh, Berrien tang. In Jeff's previous aquarium, we had a, uh, a Ducimer tang, which got to be about 24 inches. And uh, when we, we started this tank, we didn't want to get any fish that were too big in the initial population. So. The Ducimer went to another home in Newport Beach. We started with uh, the Berrien Tang, and he was probably seven, eight inches when we put him in there a year and a half ago, and now he's pushing 16, 17 inches. Mm. Um, what do you do to manipulate the feeding to you know, ensure no aggression? That's a great question. So feeding of this tank is key, and I will say to Jeff's credit, this is not typical of our installations. What you saw at the previous house is very typical. We don't like to overstock tanks. This tank te technically is probably overstocked and that's only because Jeff is very, very hands-on, communicates any issues with me and we do multiple feedings a day. So Jeff gives them a varied frozen food diet once a day and you'll see we've got a dedicated freezer back there with 15 different types of food. Everything from hard shell clams to spirulina to silver sides, krill, mysa shrimp, everything you could think of and it's all prepared and then vitamins are added, and then it's thawed, and then it's presented to the fish. We have this whole thing on a, on a feeding uh, system with the monitoring system, so we push a button, all of the heavy flow pumps shut down, the UV sterilizer turns off. We turn off all of the system that removes that food from the aquarium. That stays off for about 15 minutes and then automatically kicks back on so that the fish get the opportunity to eat everything. Then there's an afternoon feeding that's all done through the apex, and that's just dried food, pellet food. And that's mainly for the antheas. The antheas have a very fast metabolism, so they need to eat multiple times a day, and that's why you see the success in these varied varieties of fish. Yeah. So at about four o'clock in the afternoon, the lights come up, the pumps go down, the auto feeder rotates, all the little guys get their second food, their meal of the day, um, and we do that every day, seven days a week, and. Uh, you can see these boys are fat. I mean, look at Mr. Puffer over here. Oh, yeah. Guy takes down two or three silver sides a day. You're about trying to take your finger off there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and again, I want to point out, this is acrylic, and a lot of people would very much shy away from putting an Arathoron Puffer mm -hmm. in an acrylic tank for obvious reasons. But we take pride in really maintaining the acrylic. You'll have to look really hard for scratches on mm -hmm. this tank. Two years in with multiple puffers in the tank. Nick, you want to talk a little bit about the coral inserts that we have sure. in this tank? So unlike the last one, this one is not made of fiberglass. This is made out of a, a, a urethane that's mixed with a, a reactant that gives it different viscosities. It's then hand painted. The corals are all molded from real pieces. They're attached and then it's a clear coat. So again, if this were a live reef, 90% of this fish would not be applicable to this environment. Yeah. Sure, all of the antheas, maybe the damsels, a couple of clownfish, they'd do fine, but if we reduce the fish just to those, you would see nothing but a box of water because they'd all be hiding. So Jeff likes these big, you know, predatory large fish, a gray angel fish. If this was a live coral, it would be gone day one. Right. Yeah. Gives us the beauty of both worlds, and then in addition, you have an instantly mature reef. If this was a reef tank, this could easily take five to ten years to develop into right. a state like this unless you were able to get mother colonies that were yeah and even really like without the fish i mean this is a work of art in itself the I coral agree. inserts i mean it's just absolutely beautiful and you can tell painting that went involved with this is just really really well done and you mentioned you feed multiple times a day you got big fish that eat a lot so uh, there's a lot of organics that are getting put into here and i'm sure that's makes things difficult to keep things so pristine. So what is your maintenance schedule? I wouldn't say it's difficult. It's just uh, it requires the right amount of equipment. And so um, again, our baseline regimen for this aquarium is probably out of the stratosphere for the typical hobbyist. We do uh, four to 500 gallon water changes every two weeks religiously. Even if our nitrates are super low, our phosphates are, we still do the water change. We have a 100 square foot mechanical cartridge that pulls out all that debris within an hour of feeding. 
we change that religiously. Chemical media is changed religiously. Um, water tests are done religiously. And then we just monitor our feeding to make sure we're not overfeeding uh, or underfeeding. Overpowered UV sterilization, we have a two ton chiller that sits on the roof. So the, the temperature varies about a half a degree, 365 days a year. And then we have a quarantine system that we keep pristine as well. So any fish that we need to isolate from this population, we can. We can observe, we can medicate, and reintroduce. What's neat about the quarantine system now is that we have two special creatures in there, which maybe I will let Jeff tell you about. <laughs> um, and he can tell you more about the fish that we don't see right now, why we don't see them, and how how they exist with all these critters. The animal freak behind this aquarium is Mr. Jeff Tremaine. You may know him from his many successful film and television shows, but to me, he's my uh, spirit animal, and uh, we have a lot in common because we obsess over aquariums. Anywhere we go, anywhere we travel, we just uh, take it all in. So Jeff, I'll let you explain <laughs> about our little shark in here and uh, maybe some details on the feeding regimen as well. So I have a shark in here. He's an epaulet shark. He's probably 24 inches long now. And he's behind that big barrel sponge. And you won't be able to see him until the lights are out. Okay. Pretty much a nocturnal creature, at least mine is. Yeah. And so he's really a boring pet. But I actually <laughs> like it a lot. And, uh, we had to devise a way to feed him with these fish, these aggressive fish that just eat all the food. Um, and we came up with, well, at first we sank this little tube down at the bottom. I'd just do it once a night, like sink a tube down mm -hmm. and, and then on, with a little spear through the tube, have a little silver side on that. Uh, but then I realized the shark will come, he can smell the food anywhere. So it's much easier we just leave this in. I'm gonna get it coral coated soon so it blends into the tank mm -hmm. but he goes in there every night put one silver side in there every night and he just instantly goes right for it mm. and the other fish won't go in there so what is your favorite fish i mean i have my like this guy's my original fish he's the only one who survived from the very beginning when i got the big tank so this clown one, trigger yeah yeah my, i got a conspicuous angel back there yep uh captive bread captive bread really cool <laughs> jewel of the tank so we made a bunch of mistakes or i i pretty much <laughs> made them by picking <laughs> a few aggressive fish that made <laughs> the other aquarium pretty much very hard to introduce new fish uh, i had a it's called a giant hawkfish which is out of the sea of cortez he was tiny when we got him. he was probably four inches when we got him but ended up being about Eight, 18 inches long, uh, and he would make all wrasses, lives hell, and all any kind of group or any kind of aggressive fish, he would just make their lives hell. And we also had a, it's called a clarion angel fish, who again is another Sea of Cortez angel who made a lot of other fish's lives hell. <laughs> he, he was too small, he's only, but he was an aggressive fish. Pretty impressive, and with all these big fish, you said one of the smaller guys is the most aggressive right now? This one guy right here. The little puffer? <laughs> and he's not, I mean, he doesn't go around and harass, but he, he just takes snow crap. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff, I also see this awesome viewing seat. Do you sit here often and yeah, watch the tank? I do, and I've got my little record player over there. Do a, this is my little chill out room. I feel like I would sit here all the time. Oh yeah. yeah it's all <laughs> awesome. long. And Jeff, have you been into aquariums for a long time? Or? Well, I was. When I was a kid, I'd have aquariums, and then um, when I, I basically just couldn't handle the maintenance through <laughs> my early career. So, But then when uh, things got better and I could afford to have someone like Nick come over, then I got back into it. But you know, what's funny is we added these little fish later, which would seem, you know, it's counterintuitive to right. having these big, you know, some of these are semi-aggressive fish. Like, uh, to add little fish, that was a big breakthrough for us because that makes, to me, for me, makes it feel much more natural to have this variety in size, you know. Yeah. When everything was big, it's just not as dynamic. So I really love having these little fish being able to, and that never would have happened in our old tank. These would all be gobbled up instantly. And was the was the shark one of your personal wants, or yeah. what was what was the backstory of the decision to to go with the shark? It kind of more for, like the, my kids wanted it, mm -hmm. um, so we did a little research and found that this epaulette shark 
we'll, we'll, we'll never size out of this aquarium. Uh, and they're pretty docile. Uh, and so far, so good, other than he's super boring in that you don't see him until the lights go out. Well, you can say you own a shark. So. I can say I own a shark. Yeah, yeah there's that flex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really enjoy it. Like, when the lights go out, I'll come in, I'll put the fish in there, and he's instantly out swimming around or lurking. Uh, he'll come out sometimes. Like, I'll see him every now and then. It's, he'll be just creeping around. And they, those are the sharks that kind of walk on their okay. fins. And it's cool that with the coral inserts and just the whole depth of the tank that there are nooks and crannies where fish can feel comfortable to hide out, especially if they are more of a nocturnal behavior there. Yeah. Yeah, there's lots of little holes. I know where most of these fish sleep. Okay. Get to at night and tell you where most of them, and they all sleep in the same spot every night. So it also gives us the beauty of hiding the plumbing. So again, you know, there's no oddball plumbing parts in yeah. the middle of your display. Everything's hidden and uh, yeah, you can see by the surface, the turnover in this aquarium is tremendous. And is that done just through return pumps or do you have wave makers in here as well? It's all through return pumps, wow. yeah. So we have a Biz A400s on this pump, which, you know, I would say this whole system is about 2,000 gallons. We're probably turning it over six to eight times per hour with all of the filtration. And then everything is really oversized. You know, that the skimmer is oversized, the chiller is oversized, the UV is oversized, and uh, it's what allows us to have so much biology in the tank, and you could read a newspaper through the water. The, the least amount of time I'll spend here is about an hour, 20 minutes to an hour and a half, and that's on a non-water change day. Water change day, I'm pushing two hours, and then I loiter a lot to look at the, the fish, so sometimes I'm here beyond that. As much work as that went into the display, just as much went into the plumbing of the uh, of the equipment. So every great aquarium, there's yeah. got to be a killer filtration system. So let's take a look, guys. Okay, so let me explain. There were two luxuries involved with this project. The first luxury is we weren't under the gun to complete it at a certain date. Jeff wanted us to take our time, so we did take our time. We were here some nights until midnight, some nights until eight, but we took our time. So you'll see it um, with the layout, how we did. Everything's neat, organized, and clean. The word is clean. The other luxury, which we are not afforded all the time, is we have a dedicated fish room. Now, how many of you guys want a dedicated fish room? So let's take a look. This is the back of the tank. So you guys saw the front of it? A lot of the magic happens right here. Um, we have castles, those are the accent lighting, but the main lighting are simple LEDs. All of the drain and return lines are hidden by this stand. There's actually a monstrous UV underneath this, so you don't even see it. Um, Jeff comes up here, he'll target feed the, the shark, feet from here as well. Um, we can get to this last, but this is actually a quarantine system. And then this is, this is the brains of it. So, one of my favorite features of this tank, and it's because I'm a car guy. <laughs> a lot of guys don't know this. I build nasty aquariums. I also build really good hot rods. <laughs> so I wanted to incorporate some type of hot rod effect on it. What do these look like, guys? They look like headers in an engine. So a lot of times you may have seen our drain lines. They're all unistrutted. Every, anything's, everything's very angular, 90 degrees. Look at the lines on these drain lines. They look like headers on a car. So that's my favorite feature. Other than that, the key is you've got to get the plumbing out of the way. You don't want to be stepping on it. And the key to building a really good life support system, um, we've got to plan for a worst case scenario. If it's mechanical, then eventually it's gonna break down. So we put unions, ball valves, we can shut off each facet of the filtration if we have to service it. Your fill line's right above the tank. The other beauty about a dedicated filtration room, look, your makeup, water system is right here. Our, 
I it keeps mean, going. Yeah, I mean, it's all you ever need. If you're a fish geek, you sleep in here. What can I say? <laughs> but um, it runs smoothly, no hiccups, split system, um, it's ventilated. And like I said, when we bring in a new creature, a new animal, it's quarantined right here. When it's healthy, it's eating, it's put on weight, it's ready to go to this flavor. A lot of times, if it's small, this is kind of a grow system as well. And you'll see in here, there's actually an eel in there. Oh yeah, it's all yeah. poking out. Yeah, so he's been in there for a bit, and then there's a golden moray. These quarantine tanks for some people would be a, a huge Correct. home aquarium. <laughs> Correct, yeah, and, that, and that's the beauty of it. If you see one creature per tank, so there's no fear of aggression. So, um, it's like I said, it's not a luxury a lot of people have, but for something like this size, it's kind of important. And then there's also a dedicated freezer for the food. You know, so it's like right there, a well-stocked fridge with all the varieties of food. I mean, is there some valve you turn for the water changes or? Yeah, there's a return pump right by the two reservoirs and then there's a valve right over the fill line. That fill line's on a union, you simply push it down. And uh, just like a lot of our larger systems, water changes are easy because you, you can literally drain hundreds of gallons and fill hundreds of gallons in minutes. So, listen, the, if you can shorten your service time, um, as far as for the life support, you get more time to observe the fish. I always said your number one tool in keeping aquariums is observation. So you have more time for observation. As Nick said, spends time at the end of service just looking at the, the fish, observing for health, potential issues with parasites, bacteria, fungal diseases, anything like that. So. Yeah, I'll say that the filtration itself is top notch, just like the tank. You guys definitely have a very detail-oriented approach. Yeah, it, it always kills me when I hear about guys skimping on the life support. Like, that's the engine of the car. Like, it's not gonna function without a really hot... Listen, you don't have to empty the wallet, but make sure you, you've addressed all the specific facets of the life support system. Biological, mechanical, chemical. So we were just blown away by this 2,000 gallon aquarium. It was truly a showstopper. We have a few more stops to make in Los Angeles and more videos to come. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.